This is shuttle launch control, T minus three hours and holding. This is a planned build in hold. We have completed the major steps in the early part of the count. The liquid oxygen tank uh, has been filled with approximately 143,000 gallons of liquid oxygen. The fill of the liquid hydrogen tank has also been completed and is on the replenish mode. A total of 386,066 gallons of liquid hydrogen are placed on board. During this T minus three hour point, the closeout crew is sent into the pad along with the group, which has an inspection of the tank and the main propulsion system to determine whether or not there is any ice buildup from the very super cold fluids which are on board the external tank. The flight crew has been awakened and will be going into breakfast just a short time from now. This is shuttle launch control, T minus two hours, 28 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. And our astronaut crew has just left their crew quarters, uh, moving into the elevator to come down to the first floor of the ONC building for their trip to the pad. Uh, Commander Bob Crippen leading the way and uh, everybody crowding into the elevator so that uh, they can get down to the bottom. The, uh, just prior to that, uh, the NASA test director said that there would be another uh, checkpoint. He asked everybody to look at their uh, criteria and that he'll be getting back to them prior to the actual time when the crew goes on board. But at this point, there are no constraints to the launch. Uh, a number of employees uh, flashing their cameras as uh, the crew comes out, led by Commander Bob Crippen. Uh, John Fabian, the tallest of the group, once quite worried that he was just too tall to be an astronaut. Uh, with the Lumiere spacecraft, that's not a problem. Uh, Dr. Norman Thagard bringing up the, uh, the rear has the distinction of being the first medical doctor to fly into space. Commander Bob Crippen now in the white room, uh, putting his Snoopy hat on, and then uh, he'll be putting on his uh, launch and entry helmet. During the first few flights of the, uh, the shuttle, a full pressure suit was needed, uh, and so the helmet's attached to that suit. Uh, however, nowadays, uh, only coveralls are used, uh, plus a, a special harness, uh, which is used for restraint and emergencies. And uh, <laughs> Commander Bob Crippen uh, being brushed off with a, uh, a whisk room and now his uh, shoes being wiped off uh, so that he doesn't track any, uh, any dirt into the, the clean interior. Uh, and he has just uh, patted the uh, suit technician uh, on the back uh, and is now entering the orbiter Challenger uh, pilot Rick Hawk moving into the area, uh, shaking hands with the uh, uh, technicians up there prior to putting on his uh, vest. And he'll be the second one to, uh, to enter the orbiter for the seventh mission of the space shuttle. The countdown clock at T minus two hours, five minutes, 30 seconds and counting this is shuttle launch control.
course, the focus of media attention around the world has been on Dr. Sally Ride, uh, who emphasizes that she's a mission specialist and a scientist who just also happens to be a woman. However, as the first woman to fly in space on board a U.S. spacecraft, history is undoubtedly going to focus on that uh, as well as her accomplishments to date, such as a doctorate in physics from Stanford University. She's married to Dr. Stephen A. Hawley, uh, who also is an astronaut. And she was also selected in 1978 and served as capsule communicator for the STS-2 and STS-3 missions. During this mission, she's going to have a number of vital tasks to perform, such as launching the Palapa satellite and deployment and recovery of the SPAS-1 spacecraft, honors that she'll share with fellow mission specialist John Fabian. Dr. Thaggard uh, has the distinction of being the first uh, medical doctor to fly, and uh, he will be taking a, a close uh, first-hand look at the effects of uh, motion on the uh, on human in space. Prior to uh, become t the starting his medical studies, uh, he had been a naval uh, been a captain in the Marine Corps and a naval aviator, uh, flying 163 combat missions in Vietnam. Uh, he then came back uh, to the, the States and uh, took his Doctor of Medicine degree from Texas Southwestern Medical School in 1977 and was an intern when he learned of the call for new astronauts and was selected for that program in 1978 also. T-minus one minute, and the firing system for the sound suppression water system on the pad is armed. T-minus 55, the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices are used to ensure that hydrogen flowing through the engines uh, does not accumulate, uh, causing a small explosion and pulse or pressure pulse at engine ignition. T-minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching command to the onboard computers. We've gone for auto sequence start. T minus 25 seconds and counting. The sequencer on board now controlling the final seconds. T minus 17 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed breaker in launch position. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, we go for main engine start. We have main engine start and ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Roger your roll, Challenger. Houston now controlling. Mission control confirms roll maneuver started. Ground time on all S channels 217 2 20 seconds. Rust looks good. 25 seconds, roll maneuver completed. 30 seconds, Challenger now one nautical mile in altitude. Throttling engines down now to 75 percent of program. 40 seconds, the Challenger now two and a half nautical miles in altitude. 45 seconds, Challenger now three nautical miles in altitude. 50 seconds coming up now and create a maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Five seconds, Challenger, four and a half nautical miles in altitude, mark one minute, pass through Max Q, still looking good, throttle in his engine back to 104 percent, give him a go at throttle up. One minute, 
40 seconds, Challenger now 16 nautical miles in altitude, 13 nautical miles downrange, Crip and Halk and co uh, Company now coming into the last traces of the Earth's atmosphere, Challenger now 19 nautical miles in altitude. 1 minute 55 seconds, Challenger 21 nautical miles in altitude, 21 nautical miles downrange, standing by now for solid rocket booster separation. Roger, set. 12 minutes, 12 seconds. Confirm good solid rocket booster separation. Uh, the booster's falling away now. 2 minutes, 20 seconds. Challenger Houston, your first stage performance was nominal. Roger, nominal first stage. That was Capcom Roy Bridges advising first stage performance. Onboard guidance is converging now as program. Challenger is now steering for a precise window in space for main engine shutdown.